New York Giants uh, offensively, big time struggles. I think everybody knows that. Uh, a lot of this is going to come at an 11 personnel for them, the three wide receivers, one back. Uh, but they, they will mix some of their 12 personnel stuff. I don't know how much 12 personnel stuff that you're going to get from them this weekend just because of the situation with their tight end with Darren Waller being out. Uh, you know, he was a big part of that, uh, that package for them. So, you know, Daniel Bellinger and Lawrence Cage, Cager are the, the two guys. So we'll see. But that's their, their tight end's actually been a, a pretty nice, uh, nice bit of players for them, I want to say. I mean, reliable players is, I guess, the word I'm trying to look at right now. And Cowboys were going to have to deal with, with no Waller there, though it makes their job a little bit easier. Uh, we talked a little bit about Tommy DeVito and uh, his uh, – he's played a couple of games that I've watched. Uh, he finished the Jets game and he finished the Raiders game. And uh, the couple of redeeming traits that I think he has for his game is his arm talent, which is not poor at all. He he could, he could throw the ball pretty well. With it's Again, it's the opportunity that – how much opportunity is he going to have to throw the ball with – with the way this offensive line is. He's really a good athlete when it comes to navigating the pocket. Uh, when he makes his decision to run or scramble, there's usually positive results for his actions. So I think you have to be ready in this game for him scrambling. Uh, he's going to take a look. If he doesn't see it, he'll just take off running. I just That's the one thing. There's not a lot. He just doesn't have a lot of time to sit there and kind of go through all the progressions that you want. So the time of the pocket's really a problem for these guys. So the Cowboys had better be wary or aware of of him running with the football. I think that's the one thing that could really that could potentially hurt them in this game. Um, the wide receiver group, well, Wandell Robinson didn't play the first time these two teams met, and I feel like that when you look at him, um, him and Darius Slayton, uh, those are the guys that are the primary the big time players they haven't got Jalen Hyatt involved really at all and I, I can't for the life of me and I think a lot of it has to do with I should say that the fact that they don't protect they can't get him the ball down the field but the one you have to worry about I think is Wondell Robinson he's a little bit of a shorter kind of a slot player for them uh, super good hands uh, and we'll see if in fact that they can find a way to get him the ball we all know about Saquon Barkley and what he's done um, throughout his career. I didn't know this. He was 0-9 against the Cowboys in his career. Wow. Yeah, he's never beaten the Cowboys. Never been on that part of it. So, um, That's amazing. But there's an occasional player, too, where you see flashes of his ability. Hey, by the way, I'm scared of stats like that because it makes me yeah. sound like the person like they're due. due. Yeah. yeah. No, no, they're absolutely. I hear that. Absolutely. Absolutely do. I don't think it's going to happen this time around, though. I think his Dax won yeah. 12 of 13 against them. Yeah, it's, it's, there's some crazy numbers when these two teams get together. But with Barkley, there's, like I say, you see the flashes of the ability. There's just, when he gets to and through the hole, he could be a problem to deal with because of the way his running style is. But there's just not many snaps where you see him have that ability. He just they can't, he doesn't get started. And the, the Giants line, just they don't get the push required to get him going. But he is a powerful runner in the open field. He can be an issue for defenders to have to deal with when uh, attempting to bring him down like one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you have to get bodies to him. If he gets in the open field, get bodies to him as quickly as you can. He catches the ball very well. We've had some times against the Cowboys, though, where balls have popped up in the air, deflected off him that have resulted in turnovers. So around him, when he gets pressed a little bit, he, you know, he, might, he might give you a turnover or two. But for the most part, he's going to catch the ball for you. Uh, but you have to get to him quickly and get him on the ground. They're a really big play action team, by the way. And a lot of it's the heavy play action stuff is because defenders have to commit to stopping him. You know, they have to they have to bring guys up to think about, okay, we can't let them run the ball. So they'll go they'll go real heavy play action off all that stuff. Man, you mentioned their awful pass protection. Yeah. I'm looking at the uh the pass protection ratings. Yeah. They're obviously dead balls last. Uh, pro football focus on a skill of 0 to 100 gives them a 0. Yeah. Uh, the SIS uh, group that does this also has them 18 out of 100. And then ESPN's pass blocking 
metric gives them a 16 out of 100. So they are patently terrible. It's been a makeshift line. They've been injured. I mean, they bring yeah. Justin Pugh off the streets. Mm -hmm. That's the, the issues that they've had. I think Andrew Thomas is their best offensive lineman, and he's going to play at left tackle for them. Now, he's a good player, but there's times where they could you could get him off balance. And teams have been able to do that. They've kind of made him a little bit. They've taken advantage of him, uh, making him like a one-legged football player. You get him going one way and then come back the other, and he's struggled to kind of get back to recover. You rush him down the middle, he's going to eat you up all day. Uh, but, you know, if you can kind of get him off balance, he struggled with that a little bit. Evan Neal, the right tackle, I don't think is going to play in this game. I was talking to some guys at the Giants this morning. Uh, he's dealing with a hyperextended ankle. So that means Tyree Phillips is going to play. And if you talk to the Giants people, as bad as Neal has played, they're like, Tyree Phillips might be a little bit of an upgrade for us right now. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, that's how bad. And, and you know, this team has done something in offensive line. They've committed draft picks, trades to try and bolster it and make it better. Our guy, John Michael Smith, he's just not the center. He's just not strong enough right now. You watch him play. It's, it, this game is so up and down. It's very much like watching Biotish play a little bit. Like there's times where you're like, okay, he secures the block right there. He's got his guy taken care of. And then the next play, the guy's attacking his shoulder and it's up the field. And now there's a problem there. He's just not strong enough. He struggles with power a lot. So, and you mentioned. Looks like Bayard getting ragdolled from Ferguson. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty. Get was, over here. Get over here. But yeah, you mentioned Justin Pugh. He's done. And then the Bredersen is, he's more of a stopgap guy on that offensive line. So yeah, they do they do struggle on all areas. They struggle especially as pass blockers. And if you can make this team very one-dimensional where it turns into a passing game, we've seen what happens to them when that happens. And they had their best offensive line there in day one, opening day mm -hmm. of the season, and they gave up a lot of pressures. This quarterback, the thing I worry about is him, is just that scrambling ability. If he gets the third and nine or third and 10, whatever, and he just takes off running and you give up plays that way. That could be the only way that really the Giants have any type of success moving the ball. Every time he runs on Sunday, he'll be running for his life. Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. So you're a lot more confident in the Cowboys than you were going into Arizona? Uh, I'm more confident, yes, in the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And Arizona bothered me because of the stuff that they were doing with pin and poles and, yeah. and the way the quarterback manipulates the pocket and the way he could throw the football. And, and they then, could rush the pass And they could rush, bit. yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the Giants' defense tomorrow. I'm sure that's got some train wreck aspects to it as well. But this offensive line really, really hurts any type of ability they have to move the ball. Defense for the Giants. Uh, the, I think the, the, biggest, the biggest key for you right here with this Giants defense is you're going to have to get ready for their blitz is really the most important thing that I think is going to they, – they, they, when you watch them, I feel like there's two or three really good players on their defense. And I think everything else is probably below what you need to be to have a, have a really good defense. Very heavy, very heavy. 46% of the time you're going to get some kind of blitz. and Generally, when they blitz, is on second down. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you into a long on third down. And then they'll try and get off the field playing maybe a little bit more coverage. Oh, well, that's perfect. The Cowboys love third and long. Yeah. But they will they, – their big, their big blitz down is like 58% of the time they'll blitz you on second down if they get you into that situation. Well, and checkmate because we're just going to hand the ball off for one yard on second and long anyways. This, so This team struggles with run defense, though. The, the, if you look Maybe at the it's Giants, a get-right game. Yeah, and I don't know. Let me ask you guys this question. You guys are great at answering my questions. If the Cowboys do run the football and have success, would you, and it didn't have to be the Giants, but if anybody's ranked, say, 24th or 25th in the league in run defense and the Cowboys have a successful day, are you going to call that a successful day? If, you, if you're able to do that, or is it, man, they've got to show me they can run the ball against Philadelphia or San yeah. Francisco or somebody like that. It'll still lead the question of can they do it against an actual good front, but they need positivity. They, they, they need some kind of confidence builder to where, hey, we can get the run game going because they really haven't had a game all year where you felt really good about the running game coming out of it. So you'll take anything right now. What about you, Chief? Yeah, no, I mean, it's... um. 
you'll be you'll be upset if they can't run versus a bad run defense yeah. like you're saying the Giants are. Right. Then I'm gonna be like, wow, they're in a world of trouble. But running well against them, it'll be like the okay, caveat. Yeah. Hey, there's an asterisk here. Like Everybody's to, running on the Giants. Yeah, I like to see some positivity here. But anyway, if you're gonna run the ball, you're gonna have to deal with Dexter Lawrence here. He's really the the main guy across that defensive line. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau was listed as an outside linebacker. He really plays as an edge. And Jihad Ward is on the other side. But with Dexter, Dexter Lawrence, they're going to, they're going to, I believe this is how they're going to play you. I believe they're going to put Dexter Lawrence over the top of Biotish. Biotish and make him have to deal. Because if you watch the last couple of weeks, like I have, the Raiders tape and then the Jets tape. That's what they did. They just said, we're going to push the middle of the pocket here. We're going to, we're just going to make your center have to block one on one and play with like a really heavy nose. And so I, I, it would not surprise me one bit after watching how some of Biotis's struggles have it's a good been. Good strategy against him right now. Yeah. And, and maybe, you know, you cover the other guys so they can't help him. Uh, but Thibodeau will, he could play either side. He had a really good game against the Jets, he had three sacks. He looked like the guy that we were all kind of thinking about at Oregon, that like when he was coming out, that like, okay, this guy can come in and take over the league and be a really good pass rusher. The last time the Cowboys played him, though, uh, he had no pressures, no sacks. So you know. He's had some great moments, some great months, I feel yeah. like, but the Cowboys haven't seen that from him yet. Yeah. Back to your question, Tony Pollard had five yards in attempt when they played the Giants in week one. It was 14 carries for 70 yards. Yeah. So maybe this is an opportunity. And I'll consider it baby steps, you know, because last year they figured out how to stop the run. They figured out some things in their secondary. So I'll give the coaching staff enough credit to believe it is possible. Okay. We could see them, you know, get their running yeah. game back. It's got to start now and you got to see it against the Giants. Yeah, the Giants, they do struggle. They're about four and a half yards a shot running the football. But if they get, they've come out here and they don't run the ball, or you don't see, and it's yeah. one of those games where Zach and I are doing the post game and it was 3.8 a carry, and yeah. we're going to like, okay. Lost cause. Lost this cause. Isn't fun. Yeah, this isn't fun at all. But it's going to be about blocking Lawrence up front, and it's going to be about blocking Thibodeau uh, in this, uh, in the, uh, on the pass rush. I, I think they can handle Ward, but those are the two guys right there in the front I, I worry about a little bit. Their secondary is a mess right now. It, it really, really is. And a lot of it's a mess. We'll see if Adoree Jackson plays. Adoree Jackson's been dealing with a concussion, and he's been dealing with a neck problem. I was talking to the Giants guys about it today, and they were like, they were hopeful that he could play. But him and Banks are the starters. Deontay Banks are the starter cornerbacks. But if, if Adoree Jackson can't go, Nick, McCl uh, Nick McLeod, uh, who played last week against the Raiders and, and wasn't bad. It, he finished the game and, and was okay. Or Trey Hawkins. Trey Hawkins started the last time that you guys uh, played opening, uh, you know, week one. And, you know, he was a rookie and he really struggled. He's only made two starts uh, this year. And one of them was the, uh, the Cowboys game in week one, and then he played against the Commanders. But what you deal with now, I think their safeties are, I think their safeties are okay. Uh, Xavier McKinney uh, is like the you know a physical player, kind of plays down in that box area. Though he's a a very good tackler, I think he's the leader of that secondary. But the guy I want to point out is they have a guy named Jason Pinnock, and and he's a converted corner. And the reason I'm pointing him out is he's a converted corner that's now a safety, and he's he's played a ton of snaps already for the Giants. He's a physical player, but the thing he does really well is he covers. So he's a guy that could cover. This is where I wonder if they will if this if Pinnock will be the guy that takes Ferguson in this game. That they say, okay, how are we going to try and find a way to navigate dealing with Ferguson? We we probably because they've got problems if the Cowboys put if the Cowboys put Lamb in the slot, then that means that Cordell Flott is the is the slot player, and he is all over the place when it comes to his technique. He he could it could be a huge player of the week type game for Lamb going against Flott. But so that's where that I think that they're going to try and find ways to deal with Lamb with some double coverage. Have to, but the single coverage could come from Pinnock. So 
keep an eye on how the Giants play, but I think you're going to get a lot of, of, of heavy blitz with these guys. And I think that Wink Martindale, the coordinator, puts his secondary in some bad spots because of how much they blitz. They run a lot of zero blitz. And zero blitz means, or excuse me, zero coverage is no safeties, just bringing everybody and trying to get to you before you get the ball out. I think mm. you're right. There was an article that came out today, Xavier McKinney, after the game, said that they're not heard, basically, yeah. on the defense. And yeah. Wink Martindale took offense to it and yeah. said, I feel like I'm pretty open. You can come and talk to me about that. Yeah. So there, there's some fractures right now on there, that Giants There's some defense. fractures going on right now. But they're, they're, they're going to deal, they're going to try and deal with your big players. I think they've got one guy that they could do it. We'll see what happens with the – but CeeDee Lamb could have a huge day playing out of the slot if, in fact, the Giants match him up single with uh, with Flott. I, I think that's a bad, bad matchup for them. But if you block the front like we always talk about – in the running game, it's going to have to come with uh, being able to, to make sure you take care of uh, Dexter Lawrence for sure.